Hey guys, it's Rod from Huntington Company and I have a smile on my face today because I can't stop laughing at the idea of Bulova ripping off some of the biggest companies. And that's what we're talking about in today's episode of TikTok. So let's get into it. So on my wrist today is the first example I want to talk about by Bulova, the Bulova Royal Oak. And from the 90s to the early 2000s, Bulova chose to rip off some of the biggest brands, not once or twice, but a handful of times. And today I'm going to be talking about the few that I personally know and have had experience with because they have come through the watch shop. But I can probably guess that there's a lot more watches out there by Bulova that are exact ripoffs that just have not been seen or I have personally not seen yet. So if you guys know any other models, please comment below because I would love to do my research on it because this always interests me and I don't know why. But again, starting with the Royal Oak. A lot of people like to say that Gerald Genta left AP during the 90s because he was unhappy and he took his Royal Oak design and took it to a bunch of small companies in the US like Bulova, Hamilton and so on and did his own design with them. But that is false. What these companies chose to do is take a model that was popular and trending and make it their own. But Bulova took it a step further or more a step back, and they chose to exactly copy and paste the design. And here we have a perfect example of this. It is a two-tone almost, because the bracelet is all steel, a two-tone cased Bolivar Royal Oak with an Etta Swiss movement, a date function at three, and a pretty clean 36 millimeter case. Now don't get me wrong, this example is pretty cool, and these watches are pretty fun and they are also pretty expensive. They have gained quite a following in the past few years. Now, if you want yourself a bull of a Royal Oak, it's gonna cost you close to $5,000. But keep in mind, a similar example coming from AP with this case size and automatic movement is gonna fetch around $20,000. So for a fourth of the price, you can have a Royal Oak from a brand like Bulova. Down to the crown with its octagonal design and the arc that you see that surrounds the top end of the crown. This is an exact ripoff of the Royal Oak. And this wouldn't be the first time that Bulova does this. And I know this because then we have the Bulova Super Seville, which has two models in this line, the Day Date and the date just. And these examples come in steel and could be found in a gold plated case or two tone. And you can also find steel presidential bracelets, Jubilee and so on on these watches. All these examples have the same feature. They are an exact ripoff of Rolex. These examples also feature an Etta Swiss movement and are an exact one of one to Rolex down to the crown just with a tuning fork logo to show it's a Bulova and not a Rolex. Even some examples having a hidden clasp just like some of the presidential and newer Rolexes that we see in the date just line and so on. These examples look exactly like it and even worse some examples have gem set hour markers just like Rolex and even better than that there are a few that you can find with the Anniversary Jubilee Rolex dial, which has the Rolex name horizontally seen throughout the dial. But this time, that name is swapped out with Bulova. And now you have a Bulova Jubilee Anniversary dial on a Bulova for under $1,000 that looks just like a Datejust or Day Day. One of the most popular models in today's watch market is the Submariner. It is an example that is probably homaged more than any other watch. And Bulova chose to join that bandwagon before all these other Chinese companies did. And what they did was take the reference 16610, take a look at it, and they didn't even choose to put their own spin on it. They chose to take it, copy and paste it into their system, put the Bulova name, and call it a day down to the buckle and clasp that has that brick inlay design, just like Rolex, but again with a tuning fork logo to show it's Bulova. With its oyster bracelet, oyster case, and black dial, if you squint, this is a 40 millimeter Rolex Submariner, but it's a Bulova, and they're pretty rare, and they cost around $1,000, and that's pretty crazy to me but it makes sense. Homage watches have always been known to have some sort of niche following, but when you have a following as big as Bulova collectors and then you find these models, you can understand why they're so rare. So now we have a Submariner, a Datejust and Daydate, and a Royal Oak to enjoy with the Bulova name. But it doesn't stop there because Bulova thought we have a tool watch, an industrial dress watch, we have an everyday Daydate or a Datejust, what else do we need? we need a dress watch. And I think they have the same idea as me because when I think of dress watch, I think of Cartier and so do they. So they came out with a Cartier tank and what they did was 
they copied and pasted it again and put the bull of a nail. This example is not like Seiko's tank style watch. That watch has a different case design. The dial has a different texture and the crown is totally different. What Bulova chose to do is none of that. They chose to take Cartier's design with its tank style case, the flat Roman numerals on the white polar dial and make an exact copy of it, but put the Bulova name on it. So now we have a Bulova tank. And with that also came a pretty rare model that I could not believe I found a few years ago and I cannot find another one like it. And that is the Bulova Panther. Cartier's Panther watch was actually fairly popular as a ladies watch during the 90s and early 2000s. And I guess Bulova caught on because they chose to do an exact ripoff of that model. So you can find a Bulova Panther, which is actually pretty rare. And I've not been able to find another one since we sold one in the shop a few years ago. So again, now you have a handful of models that were directly ripped off from some of the biggest names in the watch world and all by one of the most respected brands, Bulova. So yes, this is a pretty shady and dark history that Bulova has. And it is also an era of Bulova that we don't talk about much. And when I did my research, I couldn't find any legal action that was taken by any other watch companies against Bulova during this time, which is pretty weird. And at the same time, most of these examples, with an exception of the Super Seville line, were made in very small batches, which is kind of weird. Because what Bulova did was they took a watch that was popular and they copied and pasted it into their own watch line. And why they did that is because they knew that that model from a different brand was popular and it was trending and it was selling. So why wouldn't they copy and paste it and make their own sales with the same watch? But why would they do it in smaller productions if they knew that it would sell? If a watch is known to be popular, why would a company take it and choose to copy it but not go all the way and sell thousands? And you can only find a few at any given time on the marketplace online when it comes to these models. So maybe Bulova knew that there is a chance that they could get caught and they were scared. So they never chose to take any of these watch models and put it into full production except for the Super Seville line for some reason. So that's what they did. And now we get to look back and say, what was Bulova thinking? And who was the person in that office room saying, hey, let's do it. Let's copy these watches. Let's just put our name on it and let's call it a Bulova. Almost tearing away the reputation that they once had and almost losing that reputation just for a couple of models that were popular and for a few extra bucks. That is pretty crazy. And that might also be why these watches were never made in higher production because somebody knew that it would destroy their reputation. So they agreed to make them, but not a lot. And now there is a huge cult following with these ripoffs by one of the most respectable brands in today's watch world. And that's pretty cool. So that was my little rant on Bulova. And so before you look at somebody and you wanna laugh at them for wearing an Invicta that looks like a Submariner or one of those brands on Amazon that look like Omegas and Tudors, just remember the brand that we all love and the brand that we may have owned in our past or have in our collection was part of some of the biggest ripoffs in the watch world in the 90s and early 2000s with the Royal Oak, the Submariner, the Datejust, the Daydate, and a handful of Cartier models. And that's all that I personally know. I have heard that they have ripped off some Breitling models and so on, but I didn't do my research on those. I want to talk about the watches that I've personally had in my hands and I know about. Because at the same time, these watches are great quality. They're Swiss movements and they are pretty well built for under $1,000. But some of these models are also reaching some high numbers like the Royal Oak. And it almost doesn't make sense to own one. But funny enough, I have one on my wrist right now. So what do I know? So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this little rant of mine and I will see you guys in the next one.